You know, just when I was starting to wonder if there were actually going to be any more new suggestions for future Offered Outlaws updates, y'all really came through in the comments of the last video, and I'm going to go through some of those comments in this one, but I'm also going to be sort of giving my feedback on whether or not I think they're going to happen, and whether or not I think they'd actually be workable within the framework of the game. But we got a lot to talk about in this one, because y'all brought up a, quite a few really interesting points in the comments of the last video. Now, a reoccurring theme that I saw a lot in the last video's comments, but I've seen it over the course of multiple videos, but especially in the last video's comments for some reason. I don't know why the last video there were a lot of suggestions about this particular thing, um, but more wheel options specifically for dually setups. And I think what people are sort of getting at when they say that is wheel setups that are, you know, custom, obviously, that are really geared towards dually trucks. Now, I know you might be saying, well, in Offered Outlaws, you can make anything a dually setup, so it really doesn't matter. But I think what people are meaning is particularly setups like this. That, of course, being a heavily customized Ford F-450 on American Force wheels with a bunch of different suspension upgrades, lighting upgrades, all sorts of stuff. But when you look at a truck like that and you see that it specifically has a set of wheels that were optioned and sized specifically for a dually, I think that that's what people are getting at in the comments when they say that they want dually-specific wheel setups. Now, this next comment that I'm about to read actually really, really got me intrigued because it doesn't seem all that far outside the realm of possibility, considering the fact that we have, you know, duck hunting, for example, uh, available in the game, and they actually brought that in as a game mechanic. But this comment reads, we need to have gooseneck campers and also the ability to actually set up camp and go fishing, which that was, it wasn't something that I never thought of before, but I guess for whatever reason, Offer at Outlaws just just wasn't an experience that made my brain go, oh, this needs fishing, but it makes sense. You know what I mean? It makes sense. You've got custom trucks, you've got trailers, you've got campers, you've got ATVs, you've got maps that have lakes on them, you've got bodies of water already in the game. I mean, I don't know how crazy it would be from a game development perspective to add the ability to go fishing, um, but even when you think about it on a deeper level, the game also has boats, so, I mean... Fishing might actually be an interesting addition to the game. Now, here's my only concern about fishing, and that is how would they actually integrate the game mechanic of fishing into the gameplay that we already have? Um, and I think it would definitely take a lot of work within the, the sort of framework we've got going on. And I wonder if it's something that they would have to put sort of on an, uh, like a selectable option. So, like, let's say you're jumping into a map, and you have to pick whether whether or not you actually want fish available on this map, and if you select yes, maybe you get a warning that says, hey, you know, this may impact your game performance, you know, especially if you're on an older device, yada, 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 but we warned you, and if it crashes your game, then it's not our fault, basically. Um, and I think that when you start adding more and more and more and more details into a mobile game, you start to need to put in little disclaimers like that that basically say, hey, if you turn this on and your game decides that it's, well, rather not even your game, but your device decides that it's had enough and you've pushed it too far that you can't turn around and, you know, blame the game and blame the developers. So it, it's one of those like kind of, you know, two-way street type things where it's going to be something that might be better on newer devices but not so good on older devices. Um, but I don't know. It was a really interesting idea, and I really wanted to highlight that comment for that reason. This next comment was actually a really, really good one, and I could see it being used a lot by players. Um, and that is, I would like to see a button that allows you to use essentially a quick access garage that would allow you to swap out between parts that you've already purchased and also swap out between trucks that you already own without leaving the game session that you're currently in. Now, I could see this being a sort of a player favorite. Um, I could also see it being kind of performance heavy or rather resource source usage heavy. Um, the only downside that I see to that is, you know, maybe if someone decided to use it maliciously and went into a session, you know, let's say with the objective of just wanting to sort of be annoying and crash somebody's session and just constantly switching vehicles and switching parts back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, solely to try to get the session to crash or something. We see that happen in Beam MP sometimes. Beam MP, if you're unaware, is the multiplayer mod for Beam MG Drive. And what happens is 
occasionally um, someone will join a session with a lot of people in it, and if they really want to overload the session, what they'll do is they'll hyper spam um, vehicles and parts and things like that so much that it essentially freezes everyone else out of the game and makes the experience kind of terrible. Um, so I think you might have to do something where there was a limit to it. So like you might be able to switch one vehicle every, you know, two or three minutes or a certain number of parts every five minutes or something like that. I could see it being a useful and well-liked feature, but only if there was some sort of limiting factor on it so that it didn't essentially get uh, overused or used to essentially make someone else's game experience worse. Because if that was the case, then it's going to end up being a feature that people don't like. And the good usage of it is going to be overshadowed by the crappy usage of it. Now, one thing that I really like about doing these Offered Outlaws update videos or like future update suggestion videos is that you get players from all across this game's timeline and all across this game's player spectrum. So, for example, you get some players uh, that are newer to the game suggesting things that they might want. You also get players from way back in the game's early stages suggesting things that they want. For example, I actually got a suggestion from someone that started playing the game many years ago that said they would love to see some of the old original crawlers get remastered and updated. Now, I know that a lot of those don't get a ton of usage these days, but I think part of the reason for that is that they haven't been revamped in a really long time. They haven't been sort of remastered and, and brought up to date with a lot of the other vehicles in the game in a while. And new crawlers would be cool, but also I think updating and remastering the old school crawlers would be really nice to see as well. And speaking of crawlers, someone actually also suggested that they would like to see deeper suspension customization for the crawlers specifically. And they said they need to have the ability to customize the suspension options specifically deeper. Like, for example, being able to stretch the suspension slash, I'm assuming they meant stretch the frame, um, because they say to lengthen the wheelbase for crawling purposes. So I'm going to assume that you meant to say stretch the frame and not just the suspension there. Um, but they also said they want more options for tech technical based rock crawling and off-road performance. So essentially what this person seems to be asking for is they want to have deeper control over the technical aspects of the suspension on their crawler, which entirely makes sense. And that kind of leads me into the next comment that I want to read, which actually, this is a really cool suggestion, which is independent rear steer. Now, I don't know how you would implement this on a phone. Um, I feel like you're going to run out of control points at some point. Um, but they do say it would open up the potential for things like crab walking, uh, you know, wild donuts and, and different lines on a rock crawl course that you might not have had access to before. Um, they also want different roof lights. And they said that they would like to see a John Deere Gator side by side, which... I don't know. I, I don't know how well those would fit into the framework of the game outside of just from an RP perspective. But then again, you know, you might have a different perspective on that, and that's totally cool. Now, this next suggestion comes from a Offered Outlaws map maker that y'all may or may not know from some of my videos um, by the name of Jamie Miller. Now, Jamie actually made some really interesting suggestions in this one, and they said a few things I think would be cool would be if the devs added more rally-inspired cars, such as a Subaru WRX STI, Mitsubishi Lancer Evo, maybe a Ford Escort Cosworth, and they said that it would really add more of a rally aspect into the game, which they think would be cool to see, and they go on to say, with the very talented map makers that are in this game, I can see there being some awesome new rally courses made. Now, I think that would be really, really cool. I just don't know, and y'all can totally weigh in on this in the comments, do y'all think that there is enough of a fan base within the game that likes that type of gameplay, right? Like, those types of cars and rally-type gameplay do you think that there's enough people in the game that enjoy that type of stuff to actually make it worth the devs' time to add? Do you think so? Let me know. Do you think yes? Do you think no? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm actually quite curious as to y'all's opinion on that. Now, Jamie also went on to say something else that may be cool would be the ability to sell or give your vehicles to people in the lobby. Maybe a sell prop point. 
Now, while I do think that would be really, really cool, I do think it could also come with its... I don't, I don't necessarily think the feature itself would be a problem, although I do think it might be something that could be exploited and could potentially become problematic if it didn't have uh, some particular safeguards already in place, but that would definitely be something that logistically you would have to figure out at a later date and after, of course, a lot of testing. And before we end, I do want to go ahead and mention some things that weren't mentioned by one person specifically, but rather were mentioned by a lot of different people, like too many to list, honestly, and those were features like people wanting underglow, people wanting more patrol vehicle lights, and generally people wanting more lighting-based customization options, as well as more options for tow mirrors. And with that all being said and done, if y'all enjoyed this Off-Road Outlaws future update speculation video, let me know, as always, any of your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Hit that subscribe button if you want to stay as up-to-date as possible on anything and everything Off-Road Outlaws related, as well as other games like SnowRunner, Forza, the list goes on. And I will see y'all in the next one. Talk to y'all later.